Pastor Tyson Bibb, Holy Cross Lutheran Church, uh, with your Wednesday devotion. We're going to be looking at the hymn of the week, which is hymn number 954 from Lutheran Service Book, We All Believe in One True God. Uh, the new format for video devotions is going to be three a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, and this is starting here in the month of June. Monday is just going to be looking at some things that I didn't get to for the worship service for Sunday. Uh, so sort of some things from the cutting room floor, if you will, when it comes to sermon and Bible study. Um, for uh, the previous Sunday. Wednesday is going to be looking at the hymn of the week, which is always going to be the sermon hymn uh, from the previous Sunday. And then the Friday devotion will be looking at, well, what's coming up for the upcoming Sunday. So looking forward to Sunday, uh, that'll be on Fridays. So for today, June 10th, uh, we'll be looking at hymn 954, We All Believe in One True God. This from the Lutheran Service Book. Now, some interesting notes here. Uh, if you've never taken the time to, when you're looking at your hymnal, look at what's at the bottom of the page here, there's always some very interesting information. The text of this hymn uh, is actually uh, written by Martin Luther, and he adapted then a tune uh, from the 1300s, that is the 14th century, for this uh, for this hymn. So an already existing tune that would have been known at the time, he took that, put some words to it that confess uh, really the, the beauty, the majesty, the wonder uh, of the doctrine of, well, the Holy Trinity. The, the fact that we worship one true God who has revealed himself in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now there are always scriptures upon which these hymns are based because of course hymns are really a confession of the faith that we sing out loud. Uh, oftentimes it can be said that hymns are also prayers that we sing out loud. Well, in this hymn, uh, this hymn is preaching and teaching in a way, um, the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. So what we have here uh, are some citations uh, or references to Isaiah 43 verses 1 to 7, Romans 8 verses 14 and 7, 14 to 17, John 1, 1 to 4, and then John 1, 14, and finally 2 Corinthians 4, 13 to 14. So then, if you want the, the text uh, to this hymn, just Google, uh, we all believe in one true God, or LSB 954, that'll come up, probably one of the first three uh, results will will take you to some uh, some good resources there, likely hymnary.org. That's a, a wonderful website for looking up uh, hymn texts. Um, but at any rate, uh, as we look through here, uh, the words to the first stanza are this. I won't I won't sing them. Uh, the tune is is uh, well, it's probably largely unfamiliar to many of you, but um, it, it's a beautiful tune. But it's just it helps in order to get the words just to listen to them being read. We all believe in one true God who created earth and heaven, the Father who to us in love has the right of children given. He in soul and body feeds us, all we need his hand provides us. Through all snares and perils leads us, watching that no harm betide us. He cares for us by day and night, all things are governed by his might. Then verse 2, we all believe in Jesus Christ, his own Son, our Lord, possessing an equal Godhead, throne and might, source of every grace and blessing, born of Mary, virgin mother, by the power of the Spirit, word made flesh, our elder brother, that the lost might life inherit, was crucified for all our sin and raised by God to life again. And then the third and final stanza, we all confess the Holy Ghost who in highest heaven dwelling with God the Father and the Son comforts us beyond all telling, who the church, his own creation, keeps in unity of spirit, here forgiveness and salvation daily come through Jesus' merit, all flesh shall rise and we shall be in bliss with God eternally. Amen, amen, amen. Now, as we look to the scriptures that this uh, hymn is based on, we see first Isaiah 43, 1 through 7. Now, I'll read a, a selection of the verses here and kind of pull out some thoughts from it that kind of tie into the hymn itself. But this hymn is a confession uh, of who the one true God is as he reveals himself to us in scripture. So we hear this from Isaiah 43, beginning at verse 1. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Now, read within the context of all of Holy Scripture, this should bring to us uh, some, some thoughts of baptism, that God has called us by name in the waters of baptism, washed us clean, made us his own, placed his triune name on us. 
Uh, so fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Uh, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my eyes, and honored, I lo and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the end of the earth. So God, gathering all his people from the four winds, the four directions of the earth together uh, into his presence. And he says here, everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And this gathering together of all God's people, all those who are uh, created for his glory, called by his name, as he says, called by my name. Again, that should uh, recall baptism, um, whom I formed and made. This is a, a little bit of a picture of the last day, if you will, that all those who uh, uh, are baptized and believe in Christ, all those who have received the name of the Lord, the name of the Lord being placed on you at your baptism, um, all those who through faith... Um, receive that forgiveness, life, and salvation, which Jesus won on the cross. Uh, all of God's people, he's going to gather us together uh, one day. As the hymn says, that we shall bleed, um, what is it? There it is. Um, all flesh shall rise, and we shall be in bliss with God eternally. A reference there. Uh, then Romans eight fourteen through 7, and I'm just going to be walking through these passages. Uh, as it says there, beginning of verse 14, for all who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. Again, this theme of sonship, of being children of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. And that term Abba is, is really the term that a, a small child would use in addressing their, their dad. Uh, their daddy, Abba, Father. Uh, and so we cry out to God in this way because we have the Holy Spirit. We have been adopted um, as God's children. So verse 16, the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, right? Christ being our brother. Uh, we have that reference here in the hymn. Uh, I got to find it for us real quick. There we go. Uh, by the power of the Spirit, word made flesh our elder brother, that the lost might life inherit, was crucified for all our sin and raised by God to life again. Uh, Jesus being our elder brother, then we are fellow heirs with Christ. Uh, and then St. Paul finishes in verse 17, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with them. Now, provided we suffer with him, that is with Christ, what it's talking about is that in this world, just as Christ was rejected, so those who bear his name, that is us Christians, those who uh, by faith are called sons of God and sons of daughters of, of God, uh, we will also suffer in this world. Uh, the devil is, is constantly tempting us every day. Even our own sinful flesh is rebelling against the new creation God has made in us. Uh, and then also, just as there are those in this world who hated Christ, there will be those who hate us. And Jesus even says, blessed are you um, when people uh, revile you and curse you on account of me, hate you on account of me. We hear that in the, uh, the Beatitudes there from Jesus' uh, Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5. So uh, we have that there, that we're going to have suffering in this world, but ultimately uh, we will go uh, by God's grace through faith in Christ into the eternal bliss prepared for us in paradise. Now, John 1, 1 to 4, a uh, passage most of us know very well here. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, through Jesus, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Uh, this then confessing the divinity of Christ, and as we hear it there in the hymn also we have that. And then John 1.14, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory is of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. A wonderful verse about the incarnation of Christ. And so then, as we hear in the hymn, we all believe in Jesus Christ, his own Son, our Lord, possessing an equal Godhead throne in might, source of every grace and blessing, born of Mary, Virgin Mother, by the power of the Spirit, uh, word made flesh, our elder brother. Right? And we have that being confessed in the hymn. 
And then uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 13 to 14, and this is the last passage that is attributed. There are certainly countless more that be, could be connected uh, directly to what's brought up in this hymn. Um, it's just that the editors of Lutheran Service Book, they found uh, some of the most applicable scriptures to attach to a lot of these hymns as their basis. Uh, and so then we have this here, 2 Corinthians 4, 13 to 14. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so also we speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us uh, with you into his presence. So St. Paul speaking to the Corinthian Christians there, uh, they're the audience of that, but then also by extension us as well. Uh, so we confess this one true God in this one true faith. Um, there is no other God. Uh, there are lots of false gods around the world and lots of false religions, but the one true God uh, and one true religion which he has established is that of Christianity. Uh, faith in the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We know the Father uh, through the Son. Uh, we know the Son by the calling of the Holy Spirit through the gospel, who's always pointing us back to Christ. And as we see over here my shoulder, his cross uh, and his resurrection. Um, and uh, then we receive the, the gifts Jesus won for us, forgiveness of sins, right? A clear conscience before God, peace with God, uh, the, the dividing wall between God and man, the hostility being done away with because of Christ's sacrifice, him, Christ being the once and for all time sacrifice for all sin. Uh, so we receive forgiveness of sins, eternal life, right? Heaven is opened up to us uh, by God's grace through faith in Jesus. Um, and then salvation from the devil, salvation from death and hell. Uh, we receive all these things through faith in Jesus. These are God's free gifts of grace that we have uh, because Christ there being that once and for all time sacrifice for sin on the cross uh, was raised from the dead three days later in glory. Uh, he's now ascended and reigning um, in heaven. And so we, we rejoice that this one true God is not only our creator, but he is also our redeemer, the one who has bought us back, and our sanctifier, the Holy Spirit, the one who makes us holy. Again, not with any holiness we possess, because we're dirty, rotten, miserable sinners. We don't deserve any of God's grace or mercy or love, um, but rather it's who God is. Uh, we love because God first loved us, and he sent Jesus to be our Savior. And indeed he is, and so through faith in him we are called children of God. So, therefore... God be praised. We all believe in one true God. Again, this is hymn 954 as found in Lutheran service book. If you've not taken some time to even just look at the words, do that. Uh, study that. And then if you have access to, to a hymnal here, uh, and in fact, you can find these scripture verses, um, hymnary.org. That is uh, H-Y-M-N-A-R-Y dot O-R-G, a great website to find hymns online. And the, the, you'll have screenshots of the hymns. You can see everything that, that you would see if you'd open up the hymnal yourself. But again, this being our first, and I'll try not to make the uh, subsequent ones longer, uh, but the first of our hymn studies um, that'll come on Wednesdays uh, as we continue through the month of June and the summer. God's peace be with you. The Lord bless you and keep you as you go about your day.